to the motherfucking relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Okay, we'll start with this. Some exciting news via the WBA's website as it pertains to the women's atom weight division, where Germany's own two-division champion Tina Ruprecht will be challenging Japan's own unified champion, Eri Matsuda, November 23rd, in Tina's neck of the woods, in Heisenberg. Heidelberg. Heidelberg. For three of the four major titles at this weight, at atom weight, there are three champions. Tina Ruprecht is one. Eri Matsuda is another, and Japan's own Samuri Yamanaka is the other. She's got the IBF title. Whoever wins this fight will be just one belt away, one fight away, from becoming this division's undisputed champion. Whoever wins this fight will achieve a rank on the Ring IQ pound for pound list. I'm looking at Tina for the win. I'm leaning towards Tina, it being that it is going down in her neck of the woods, so she will get consideration. Let's not be coy. Home field advantage is a real thing. Tina Ruprecht will have it when she faces Iri Matsuda, who sports professional record of seven wins with one loss, one draw, only one recorded knockout, having never been knocked out in nine professional bouts. The less experienced fighter of the two compared to Tina. Tina sports professional record of 13 wins with one loss, one draw, three knockouts, having never been knocked out in 15 professional bouts and having been a champion at both light flyweight and currently at atom weight. I figured she would do this. When she moved down in weight in her last fight opposite the ring then champion Fabiana Batiki, I figured that if Tina wins that fight, and I picked her to win the fight, and she did win the fight, she'd shoot for undisputed at this weight, because it's entirely doable. Tina is one of the better fighters in the sport of women's boxing. You don't often hear about, because she's based out of Germany, because she fights at the lower weights, and Americans, in a very general sense, don't follow the lower weights, whether it's the men or the women. So she doesn't get much coverage here. Though for a perspective, after she suffered that lopsided decision loss to Senecia Estrada, instead of fighting some German journey woman, some ham and egg girl, she took a champion. She took on an unbeaten champion straight away at a new weight. That's the kind of fighter Tina Ruprecht is. She really is one of the better fighters in the sport. And if she wins, she will achieve a rank on the Ring IQ pound for pound list, and she will be just one belt away from becoming the Adam Weight Division's undisputed champion. Having last seen action in January of this year, the same applies to Erie. They're on the same schedule. Tina fought Fabiana Batiki in January of this year, and Erie fought Yuko Kuroki in January of this year. So they're on even terrain in terms of their schedule of activity. They're just as active as one another, but I am leaning towards Tina to win this thing, who's often impressed me. She's a small fighter, very short, stumpy fighter, but she's light on her feet, fast, sharp, punches hard, Great combinations mid-range to inside with great agility to cut angles. Mid-range to inside. Knows how to apply pressure. Put the pressure on her opponent. I think she has the better resume of the two, having shared the ring with the likes of Yo Costa Valle, Fabiana Batiki, Senecia Estrada. I think Tina's resume is better than Aries. It speaks for itself. Because she has more fights, more rounds in the bank. She has both experience and home field advantage on her side alongside what she can do, what she can actually do in the ring, because it doesn't all boil down to intangibles. I like Tina to win. At first glance, I give Tina the edge. And it should be a fun fight to watch, because even if Eri wants to box and punch, Tina Ruprecht is gonna bring it. Tina is gonna force her to fight, crowd her mid-range to inside like she does everybody else. Pressure. We'll give both fighters a closer look, but like I said, at first glance, I like Tina to win. I like Tina by way of a points decision. And we'll talk more about the fight as the fight date approaches. Have yet to even make more than a million dollars in every fight. Wow. Every fight. When I fought Lomachenko in that time and COVID, everybody was talking about how he gave me 800 grand on top of whatever. No, never did. I came back home with $460,000 after everything. Fighting the number one pound for pound over Crawford and Canelo. And then when it came to Josh Taylor, I came home with probably like seven, eight grand, seven, eight hundred grand. Yeah. I, I have yet to even make more than a million dollars. This admission from Teofimo caught the attention of none other than Terrence Crawford, who said, Lopez, looks like you're the one in a messed up situation with top rank. You want to fight, 
What are you contracted to fight for? And y'all say, I'm looking for a payday. Y'all kill me with the BS. Lopez, you're over there hurting, I see. To which Teofimo responded, laugh now, cry later. I'll fight you for free. No, you won't. Destroying your legacy is worth more than money to me. Then why are you crying on the Is What It Is podcast about what little money you've made so far? Fishing for sympathy? This is why he resents Terrence Crawford. This is why he resents Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson, because these fighters make a lot more per fight than he does. But he thinks he deserves more. There's a reason for that. As boring as Shakur Stevenson is, when he's fighting in New Jersey, he's good for about 10,000 tickets. He can put 10,000 asses in 10,000 seats. Teofimo can't do that. Teofimo, at his very best, can draw maybe 4,000 or a little more than that to the Hulu Theater. He doesn't sell as many tickets. That's not an opinion. That's a fact. Teofimo has never drawn 10,000 people to a fight, a fight that he's had. He hasn't. Shakur Stevenson has more than once. So he makes more money. Devin makes more money because he's willing to do the things that Teofimo won't. You will recall that when Triller still had the rights to the Lopez versus Cambosos fight, somewhere in between the time that they got them and they lost them, they were urging Teofimo to have the fight with George in Australia. Teofimo didn't want to do it, not realizing there was a lot of money down there for him in Australia. That interest in the fight was bigger there than it was in America, but he didn't do it. You know who did? Devin did. Not once, but twice. He went down there two times for George Cambosos. Now you can argue as much as you like that Teofimo was well within his rights as a champion to not go to Australia, but in the end, it didn't work out, did it? Because he ended up losing. The ends have to justify the means. You took so long with that fight. It costed you so much time that by the time you had it, you were busting at the seams, you couldn't make the weight comfortably, and you lost. You lost. Now, maybe if you would have had that fight sooner. Maybe. If you would have went to Australia, if you believed in yourself enough to go there, that you can beat George irrespective of where it happens, maybe you wouldn't have lost because it wouldn't have lost you so much time. You didn't want to go to Australia. Devin did. Not once, but twice. And ended up making more money than you. Crawford's always make more money than you because he's a better fighter than you, more accomplished than you in every way you can imagine. Terrence would never lose to a George Cambosos, but you did. Oh, you keep telling interviewers you were robbed. Like nobody saw the fight? Like nobody saw what happened? They didn't see you get sat on your back pocket? They didn't see you get countered and battered and bloodied? Kid looked like he got hit by a car. George Cambosos did that. The same George Cambosos that Devin Haney beat easy. The same George Cambosos that Maxie Hughes arguably beat with you. He looked like Sugar George Whitaker. Sweet George. <laughs> Sugar George. And you're wondering why these guys make more money than you do. Crying to Cameron and Mace that you never made a million dollars for a fight. That's not true. No, he doesn't make what Shakur Stevenson makes. He don't. And he don't make what Devin or Terrence make. He don't make that either. But he's made a million dollars. He's doing a Brian Norman thing where he tells you what he gets after he pays everybody because, you know, you got a manager, you got a trainer, you got a cut man, maybe a strength and conditioning coach or a nutritionist. You have to pay these people. He paid them. After he paid them, I guess he went home with four. Don't forget about the taxes. You can't forget about the taxes. But these are the same deductions that most fighters have. You got people, you got to pay them. Shakur's got deductions. Devin's got deductions. Terrence has got deductions. You got deductions. Playing yourself the violin that you never took home a million dollars. Well, try not to lose the guys like George. Maybe that'll happen for you. <laughs> Some people actually believe <laughs> that the guy who lost the George Kimbosos struggled with Sandor Martin, struggled with Jermaine Ortiz, looked bang average with Steve Claggett. Some people actually believe that this kid's serious about fighting Terrence Crawford. I saw a Twitter user that goes by the name HLD say, CB4, Kendrick Crawford, is officially ducking the call out. What? Ducking the challenge and ducking the smoke. Teofimo is ready to snatch Crawford's legacy, yet all you hear from Crawford and his booty bud fan club are lame ass excuses. I'm pretty sure that most Terrence Crawford fans would love to see him beat up Lopez. I'm a Crawford fan and I'd love to see that fight. Teofimo would be the best, most accomplished name ever on Kendrick's resume. You mean a guy who couldn't knock out Steve Claggett? While Teo has two names on his resume more accomplished than anyone Crawford, 
has ever faced. And he still lost to George Cambosos. <laughs> so do you need somebody to hold your hand through this? Explain to you how weight classes work? That and is Rael Madrimov. For example, while not as accomplished as Teofimo Lopez is more dangerous, because he's a bigger guy at a higher weight. I don't think Teofimo beats Israel. You got knocked down by a like punching Sandor Martin two times and you, you yourself could not knock out Steve Claggett who stood in front of you for all of 36 minutes and you couldn't get him out of there. That was at 140. What would a guy like Israel do to Teo at 154? What would Crawford do? Crawford. Had another original thinker that goes by the name Professor Narcissist say, dudes here all go in on specific fighters every chance they get and nobody complains. Tank Davis, David Benavidez, Teofimo Lopez, Ryan Garcia, Deontay Wilder, etc. Etc. I don't even like most of those dudes, but the second Bud Crawford or Anthony Joshua are criticized, goodness sakes, penny soaked. Crawford. So what is it you want me to criticize Terence Crawford about? Because lame brain Teofimo fooled idiots like you into thinking he really wants that fight? The guy who just ducked Brian Norman convinced you Crawford. he wants to fight Terence Crawford. You believed him? So like what are you, delayed? You retarded or something? You punchy? You lose. George Cambosos. You duck Brian Norman, but we're supposed to believe you want to fight Terence Crawford. Professor Narcissus does. Blomo. I chalk it up to lead poisoning. I'd wager that Professor Narcissus ate a lot of paint chips with his frosted flakes. Blomo. Fetal alcohol syndrome is yet another explanation because Clearly there's a lack of common sense. You ain't got none. You don't trust your two eyes or something, or is it you don't want to believe what your eyes are seeing? You can't process that Teofimo really is not that good. You stupid or something. Guys like a fighter for whatever reason, you like a fighter, and you can't think straight after that. That's what I notice about this era that differs from the previous one. There's too many boxing stands, too many obsessed boxing fans. At least when the content creators glaze a boxer, you know why they're doing it. For access. Access to the fighter. They need the content. That's their bread and butter. But why is this guy glazing Teofimo Lopez? Why is he so mad at me when I've said more than once? I would love for Teofimo Lopez to get that fight so that I can watch this moron get beaten within an inch of his life. I guess the problem is I don't believe him. I don't believe a guy who ducks Brian Norman wants to move up to 154 to fight Crawford. I don't buy it. I think you're clout chasing. I think you're doing what you're doing because you know you don't have a fight before the end of the year, but you want to keep your name out there. You got to promote yourself somehow, so you pretend you want to fight Crawford. Knowing it's not likely to happen. I mean, you're still under contract with Top Rank. Unless I'm mistaken, you're still a Top Rank fighter. So nothing that you want to do, claim you want to do, you can do without running it by them first. Did you call Bob? Did you call Bob and tell Bob to call Turkey, to call Crawford to make the fight? Did you do any of that? Or did you just do a bunch of interviews saying the same thing? The same thing you've been saying for months when if you want to make the fight, there is an avenue to make the fight. There actually is. You get Bob on the horn, Bob gets Turkey on the horn, Turkey gets Crawford on the horn, and we'll see what happens. Because Crawford ain't got nothing to be afraid of in you, my friend. You suck. Because there's one or two guys out there too stupid to see it. That's between them and God. God. You're ordinary. Jesus Christ. Much more obvious does it have to be. Yeah, Crawford didn't look perfect with Madrimov, but he won. If you're gonna tear him down for that, where's that same energy for Teofimo losing, actually losing to George Cambodia? Where is it? By my count, Teofimo's looked far more human, far more times in fights he was supposed to win easy than Terence Crawford. Or is this not about Teofimo? Is this about someone else? Are you one of those weirdos that's mad that Terence wants to fight Canelo and now you're using Teofimo as a shield? Is that what you're doing? You're gonna need a bigger boat. You're gonna need a better fighter. A better fighter than Teofimo. He's average. I've already seen several different versions of what this fight might look like years ago with Yuri Orkis Gamboa at 135, a more improved version of the fight with Felix Diaz at 140, and an even more improved version of the fight at 147 with Sean Portier. A shorter, stumpier fighter trying to close the distance on Terence Crawford is going to get countered all night. He'd bull and matador T.O. 
all night because Tio is not good on the front foot. Tio is not a pressure guy. He's built like those aforementioned fighters. He's a shorter, stumpier fighter with short arms. That's how he's built. But those guys are a lot more fluid coming forward and applying pressure on their opponents than Tio is applying pressure on his opponents. When he tries to, he gets countered. He gets out hustled. Terrence would beat Tio easier than he beat them. Now, I don't think myself Bert Sugar for these insights. I feel that any objective, level-headed boxing fan who's been paying attention to the both of these fighters, what their strengths are and their weaknesses, I believe that any seasoned boxing fan would arrive at that same conclusion. It's not exactly an epiphany, and I'm not exactly Nostradamus for telling you that you've got to be some kind of special kind of stupid, rare. You must be some kind of cockeyed optimist that you give Teofimo any kind of odds in this fight because it's very obvious that he loses, which is why it's very obvious that he's not serious. How could he be? Terrence is a champion at 154. You understand that? He holds a title at 154 pounds, not 147. So no catch weight talk, no weight stipulations. You want him, go get him. Simple. You have no leverage. You bring nothing to the table. He's already en route to Sebastian Fundura, a champion at his own weight, by the way, and a more difficult, dangerous fight than you'd be. You're a tune-up, Teofimo. You don't want to hear it, but it's the truth. Your fans don't want to hear it, then maybe your fans should stop trying to gaslight the rest of us. This kid's not serious. Nobody who ducks Brian Norman is serious about fighting Crawford. What are you idiots doing on this channel anyway? Like that or uh, Professor Narcissist guy. If you're so averse, so at odds with the views that I express on this channel, then why do you keep coming here? I can think of at least one channel that loves Teofimo as much as you do. Perhaps you should be over there. There where the content creator, creators, will say more of what you want to hear because that's all you're in it for. You just want to hear pretty lies and you want me to talk up Teofimo for doing what? I'm not going to do that. If you're expecting me to, you're in the wrong place. Keep it up and I'll revoke your speaking privileges, you moron. Why are you mad?